Let's talk about team building. Hello everyone, Dylan Schumacher, Citadel Defense, and we're gonna talk about team building. Uh, you know, we talk about you know trying to build a local crew and, and having people you can buddy with and all that stuff, and that's super important and super helpful, and you need all the friends you can possibly have. And I'm not gonna talk specifically about like what you should do, what are the steps you should do and go out to take to make friends. Uh, we're, we're not gonna talk about that this time. We're gonna talk about a framework for thinking about how to build a team. And hopefully this will guide how you think about making those friendships. So in my mind, and this is 100% made up by me, uh, so take that for whatever it's worth, but I look at it as you need kind of three tiers of, of friends or comrades here. So well, the way I look at it is you have a pyramid. And in that pyramid, you have three basic uh, tiers of people. And this isn't tiers like importance or value. This is tiers just in organizational, uh, how we're gonna organize it, if that makes sense. So it doesn't mean that someone's at the, that in the top tier is, is a more important human, human being or person. It just means this is how I break it down based on numbers of who's gonna fall where, how many people are gonna be in what category, and, and their general commitment level slash uh, interest level, okay? So in the top tier of people, we have team, okay? And what I mean by team is like your tightest boys, guys who you've been friends with for a long time, who live close to you, who you get to train together with a lot, and by a lot, I mean, you know, a couple times a month. Um, you're able to, you know, have your deep friendships that you hang out with outside of gun stuff maybe, but people that uh, you have the most faith and trust in. They have a high level of skill, they have a high level of physical fitness, like these are your people, right? And you are willing to die for them. And I mean that, that's important for people that you're gonna consider your team, right? These are your core people that you're gonna train with a lot, that you get out and you do your burpees because you do it for your team. Not because you like burpees, but because you know that you need to do burpees in order to better serve your team. You need to find yourself a crew like that. And if you're like, Dylan, I don't have that, that's totally fine, I understand. Again, we're talking organizational framework. So you can put people in categories and put yourself in a category of how you're able to contribute uh, to or build a crew, okay? So in that top tier, we count that as team. Again, the, the most core central people that you're gonna build this whole thing around. In that second tier, uh, this is what I call auxiliaries, okay? I don't know if I spelled that right, I hope I did. But auxiliaries are uh, people that are interested in the pew pews and in the shooting, but maybe aren't as committed uh, to the whole deal as people in the team. Or maybe they are really committed, but they live a long way away from you, right? So they only get to train, get out and train with you every so often. Or, uh, again, maybe they're just not quite as skilled yet, okay? This is, this is a um, sliding scale, meaning people can move up or down the pyramid depending on their own uh, deal. You, you decide your own level of involvement, just like Project Mayhem and Fight Club. Uh, so, point being that you, uh, you need auxiliaries, right? Team, yeah, maybe, I don't know, I'm making up a number here, six, eight guys, something like that. Maybe if you're lucky, maybe you got 10, but probably not that many, right? For most of us, maybe like two to four, okay? Auxiliaries, maybe you can, maybe you can double or triple those numbers, right? And now you got more people that you can call on, that you can train with every once in a while, that are generally on your same page, that are like-minded, that wanna be there, that wanna learn, uh, but just aren't, you know, when you call them every weekend, you're like, hey man, let's get out this weekend. They're just not into that, right? They don't have the, quite the level of dedication and or ability. Right? But maybe someone who lives far away from you is, is, uh, and trains with you when they can, maybe they move closer because they get a new job or whatever. And then all of a sudden, like I said, they, they move up into the, that team category, right? Because now they live there, they're more available. One of the things that you want uh, in people in your pyramid, you want them to be fat, uh, F-A-T, faithful. Are they faithful? Do they show up when they say they're gonna show up? Are, are they committed? Are, are they you know, a faithful person, available? Maybe they're really faithful, but they're not available because like I said, they live far away, right? Which bumps them down to the auxiliary category. You know, or they're just, they don't have time. They're a dad with eight kids and you know, work 60 hours a week. That guy's not available. He might be really faithful, but he's not available, right? Because he's, he's busy, he's got a lot to take care of. And then last one, T, teachable. 
you want people in your crew that are teachable. You need to be teachable, which means that none of this thing about, oh, well, that's not how we did it in my day, and that's not how I learned it, and when I served in this unit, whenever here, we did it this way, and that's the only way to do it, right? You need people that are teachable. We have to grow and learn together. So you need people that are fat. You need them to be faithful, available, and teachable, right? And the most faithful, available, and teachable people are probably gonna work their way up into that team category, right? Now again, not a value placement on anybody's individual worth as a human being, simply a way to organize people. You're gonna have less people that are all the way in, and then you're gonna have more people that, again, can be in and, and wanna help and wanna be a part of it, but maybe just don't quite know enough yet. And maybe after a year, they, they, they do move up into that team. And maybe after two years, you know, some guy in the team uh, has another two kids or whatever, and he just, he can't do it anymore, so he's gotta bump down. You understand how this works. The last one down here, and I just put this in the broad category of support. Uh, these are people who may or may not be interested in actual gun shooting stuff, but they can do lots of other things, right? They can hold on to caches for you. Uh, they can pass information for you. They can be people that are monetarily support things or that have property that they're gonna come let you train and shoot on, right? There's all the other stuff of logistics and support. Maybe they're a really good welder and you need a welder, right? Or a really good mechanic and they're able to fix up old vehicles for you to use, right? All kinds of things. Like, you need as many support people as possible. And so, again, this is a pyramid because you'll, you'll have the few up here, you'll have the many here, and here you want all the friends, right? You want as many friends as possible. You need as many people as possible. And when we're talking about American Minuteman stuff, Gorillas exist historically because they have the support of the population. That, you read any history book, that's how things work. And we talk about being American Minutemen and China invading tomorrow and blah, blah, blah. Uh, we're talking about having a wide support network, right? That's what we're talking about. So you need a wide support network. And you need, like I said, as many of those people as possible and to have as many connections in there as possible. Now, again, you can move up and down. This just represents how many people should be in each category. And the last thing I would say is, don't automatically put yourself up here. Maybe you're an auxiliary to someone else's team, and that's okay. Maybe, you know, I doubt you watch this channel if you're a support person, but maybe you're a support person, and that's okay, right? And maybe you're a support person, and you wanna be an auxiliary, and you wanna find a team, right? That, that's possible. Or you're like, no, I am an auxiliary, and I, now that I understand these categories, I see that, and you know, I don't, I don't wanna do that, I wanna be a support person, or whatever. I'm just saying, understand that these are the different categories, I think, in Dylan's made up world, of how we can help organize people and organize uh, training and commitment levels. Because you don't have to be mad at some support person who's not interested in shooting. You can just say, oh, well, you know, I need people to shoot, but they don't want to, so, but they're really good at this thing, and that's actually a skill we need. So maybe I, I can get them in and they can help us do that, right? Or they just love to make food and they have this great outdoor grill. And so every time uh, we have training, they're willing to make lunch for us. And that's just like awesome, right? You need those people. And don't get mad at them because you want everyone to be team and they're not there to be committed to that. Be okay with the fact that some people are just gonna be less committed and we need to use people, this is an all volunteer thing, we need to use people how they're willing to be committed. And that's okay, you choose your own level of involvement. So I hope that is really helpful to give you again some categories for understanding how we should think about building crews and how we should think about uh, building teams that are gonna function together. Do brave deeds and endure.